Mothers of the Israeli hostages kidnapped by Hamas are sending a loud message to the world. Our Middle East correspondent Daniel Cohen is at Hostage Square with the silent demonstration speaking volumes about the Israelis still in captivity. Nine minutes. That's how long the silent demonstration lasted for a group of mothers of Israeli hostages kidnapped by terrorists and taken to Gaza nine months ago on October 7th. Tears streamed down the faces of some of the mothers as they sat in front of chairs laden with some of their children's belongings. A guitar, some clothing, a helmet, pictures of their children. The heart-wrenching gathering Tuesday was called Mom is Waiting. Here's two of those mothers sharing their agony. It's nine months now and two days since my son Idan has been kidnapped by Hamas. And I think it's really important for everyone to see how hard it is just to sit and wait. We are the mothers. Uh, there is no love like a mother love. And uh, we just want to ask everyone that uh, involved in the negotiation to do whatever they can to make it happen. On Monday, Hamas released a propaganda video of Daniela Gilboa, the daughter of the woman you just heard from. In the video from January, you hear her begging to be brought home, saying the Israeli government abandoned her. Israeli media never publishes videos without the permission of the families because of the psychological damage. Regarding a hostage ceasefire, intelligence chiefs are resuming their negotiations in Doha, Qatar today. On Tuesday, the State Department said a deal is closer than a few weeks ago. Gaps remain over Hamas wanting Israeli forces to leave Gaza permanently before destroying all the terrorists and freeing the remaining 116 hostages. The stakes for a deal are high, but higher for the mothers whose children's very lives depend on it. Now back to you. All right, Daniel Cohen, thank you so much. For more on the Israel-Hamas war, let's welcome in counterterrorism and Mideast expert and Republican congressional candidate for Arizona, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Dr. Jasser, thank you for joining us tonight. So Hamas is threatening to derail the ceasefire negotiations after Israel stepped up military efforts in northern and central Gaza. What's next? Well, I think their, their comments about derailing the peace uh, uh, attempts are, are just testimony to the fact that their attempts are, are, are not real. If they really wanted peace, they would uh, release the hostages and surrender. Mm -hmm. This is a just war from Israel and the IDF since October 7 when Hamas uh, executed a uh, genocidal uh, uh, pogrom across their border into Israel. And uh, this war will continue until Hamas is either decimated or until they release the hostages. So the negotiation, as you can tell, the negotiations are being done by Egypt, Qatar, sort of the, the homelands, if you will, of the Brotherhood. And this Islamist movement uh, has been fueling Hamas, and uh, Iran fueled it for some time. And ultimately, there's not going to be peace until either Hamas is defeated and or they surrender and release the hostages. So I, I think, you know, hats off to Netanyahu and Israel for at least attempting to have a conversation with them uh, while they continue appropriately uh, the, the military fronts uh, in, in winning this war. Yeah, you just mentioned that. So CIA Director Bill Burns met with senior Qatari, Egyptian, and Israeli officials in Doha, you know, hoping to negotiate the ceasefire and get these hostages released. but. Something, you know, you watch the news, and I haven't heard much from the Biden administration about talking about getting these hostages out. There are Israeli hostages, and there are also American hostages who have yet to come home. But it almost seems like this, this story just doesn't exist when it comes to a lot of the media as well as our president. You know, and, and I have to tell you, as somebody who uh, has had family in Syria and elsewhere where They've been uh, near victims of chemical weapon attacks and, and hundreds of thousands uh, have died in other wars. To hear the Biden administration start already to try to take credit for peace negotiations, it's like the rooster taking credit for the morning. At the end of the day, Israel has been having to fight this war by themselves. And uh, we have simply uh, had a president who is trying to remain relevant after his own uh, domestic uh, realities are starting to uh, uh, come to fruition, which is regarding his own issues of impairment and other things, but at the end of the day, our commander-in-chief has been missing, and uh, Israel's been on its own. Mm -hmm. And uh, while they talk about peace, they've not been talking about, as you said, the release of the hostages, the American hostages, the Israeli hostages. Mm -hmm. They've not been talking about the, the terrorism of Hamas and their inability to, to come to the peace table and surrender, which is what, what somebody should do if they really care about ending this war. This war was not 
was not Israel's, uh, uh, it was brought upon them by acts of terror, that the Biden administration, as you said, has never, I, I can't recall them reminding the American public and the West about the fact that what started this on October 7, and that's what we need to remember as this war will soon come to an end when Hamas is finally decimated. Do you think, okay, unfortunately we got to go, but uh, love, love your commentary, appreciate it so much, and we hope that you have a great night. Dr. Josser, thank you so much. Thank you, anytime.